YouTube Zookeeper. What we're going to talk about today is our outdoor weather station anemometer. How I wired it and how I coded it. So the first thing we're going to talk about um, is the how the math works. Um, 88 feet per second is equal to 60 miles an hour. Well, I measured the radius from the center of the cup to the uh, rotational pivot, um, and that comes out to 1.833 feet of circumference. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you could do this. I've seen people take a five quart ice cream jar lid and take a pencil and draw around it and then measure how much that is. And that's a pretty cool way to do it. Um, I just simply use, you know, math to figure it out. Um, the circumference is two pi r. So once I knew what r was, it was a simple. So that brings us to um, the 88 feet in one second divided by the distance of circumference. That gets us to 48 revolutions per second because 88 divided by 1.833 is 48 revolutions per second equates to 60 miles an hour. Now this is math. This is not, does not account for the wind resistance of the bucket going the other way or any of that stuff. This is simply based on the math. What that means, the implication there is that one revolution per second is 1.25 miles an hour because if I take my 48 revolutions and multiply it by 1.25, I get 60 miles an hour again. Now, the anemometer that I bought, which there is in the video, um, for every one revolution, I get two counts, which means that I get 90 counts per set, 96 counts per second, taking the 48 revolutions per second here, multiplying it by two, gives me 96 counts per second to equal 60 miles an hour. Now this is where the math starts getting funky. Um, and the reason it gets funky is be not because the math is funky, but because my ability to explain it is limited. I have 96 counts being equivalent to 60 miles an hour. If 96 in a second is 60 miles an hour, 96 one sixtieth of that would be one mile an hour, right? Because one mile an hour is one out of 60. So that's where this number comes from. Okay. Now, to flip that upside down, you take 60 divided by 96, or you take 1 and divide it by 1.6. You get the same answer either way. 1 divided by 1.6 is 0 0.625, and that is seconds per count, which is then equal to 1 mile an hour. And that's how I got my calibration number. It's just the way my brain works doesn't make it right. It's just the way it is. I kludge together from what I found on the internet to get my anemometer to work. Um, I'll try to make this brief. I am not a software computer programmer geek. I'm just explaining how I did this and how I put the pieces of this puzzle together to get something that pretty much works. So the first two things I have are the includes, which are wire H for my I squared C communication, and then the um, Adafruit SH110X um, include there, uh, which would be, um, where did I find that? Uh, uh, crap, where did I? Uh, 
it's include something or another. Oh, include library. Yep, that's the library for it. Okay, so this is the library for my display. Next, I tell it that the display is this display and these are its features. This I got straight from the Adafruit website, cut, copy, paste. I didn't invent this. Next thing I did is I told the uh, computer that I want to use pin 2 and that that is not changing. It will be the same um, for the entire program. Um, so these would be global variables, I guess you'd call them. Um, the next thing I did is I had to make the duration an unsigned long, even though the duration is milliseconds, it will be compared to millis, M-I-L-L-I-S, which can be many thousands or millions of seconds. So you have to use the unsigned long um, duration as well. Uh, float, because I want to use um, decimals um, for the lower speed measurements specifically. So I use float, set that MPH, miles per hour, and I initially set that to zero. The next thing I do is I go through my setup. Um, so I begin the serial. There's no reason to use the serial monitor in the real world when you're out there and this is running in its final code. But for testing purposes, it is, and this code has like fewer than 50 lines. So the serial monitor is not going to cause me any problems. Next, um, I have wire begin. That initiates the communication with my display. The next line is while, so that when the serial hasn't pulled up yet, um, it will wait one second for the serial communication to come online. You can change this number from, you know, anywhere from 10 milliseconds all the way up to, you know, however you, however many you want. Um, the next line, I establish the pin mode for the pin. It's an input with a pull-up resistor that is built into the system. Following line, I initiate the display with display begin and tell it what the um, I squared C address is, and this is again right from the documentation provided by Adafruit, not something I invented. Um, again, the set rotation, the set text size. Now the text size goes from zero to, I think, eight. Um, seven seems to work the best for me. Um, one is okay, but it's pretty small. Really, I'm just displaying three, or two or three digits. I don't care. I mean, if it fills up the thing and makes it easy to read, I'm fine with that. Next, I set the text color, which is kind of silly because if memory serves me right, this is a black and white um, display. So why I'm setting the text color, I don't know. It was in the example, so I used it. Like I said, I'm not a software guy. All right, scrolling down to the remaining code. I could probably take a couple more lines on that. Here's my loop. And the loop is what runs forever. So I set my cursor position and my, and I clear the display initially. Then I tell it that the duration I want to measure is this pulse in. And this is the piece, the pulse in is the piece that I didn't know before the other day. I found this in the documentation for Arduino and I'm cool. I can actually take a pulse. Here's my pin number two that I referenced above. I'm measuring um, when it changes from the high state, and if it goes longer than a million microseconds, not milliseconds, microseconds, so if it goes longer than one second, it returns zero, and that is below. If the duration is longer than three microseconds, then I do my calculation for wind speed. Miles per hour equals one million microseconds or one second divided by the actual duration that I had. And that is then multiplied by 0.625. Now, there's been arguments and discussions about should I multiply it by the 1.25 or whatever. This is really accurate. I took this thing out 
tested it. I'll put a video out there. Drove it around the block in a car at 10 miles an hour, and it was plus or minus one mile an hour, accounting for wind and wind gusts and things like that, the entire trip around the block. So this is, the math works out pretty well, actually. So the next couple lines are just print lines. I print the um, measured speed in miles per hour to the serial print. I add a line so that I can differentiate one from the next. And then I display print unless my duration is not greater than three. Remember I said one second. If my duration is less if it goes beyond this one million microseconds or one second it will return zero that's a, what the pulse pin does so if i divide by zero i get an error so i'll put this else statement in here to say okay if it took longer than one second for my anemometer to rotate my wind speed is less than one mile an hour Therefore, I want to print mile per hour is less than one for both the display and the serial print. Okay, just a brief outline of how I did the wiring. Um, basically, I cut this telephone jack connector off because I won't be able to use that outside anyway. Um, so the green wire, I just used a green crock clip, carried that over to pin two of the off feather and the red wire I use the black crock clip because um, just to mark it as I'm connecting it to ground so I can keep everything straight and ran that over to ground and ground is the one two three fourth pin in on the bottom and this is oriented like the display would be with the USB connector on the left hand side and the antenna on the right hand side and again pin two is the third one in on the top and ground is the fourth one in on the bottom. And basically all that happens um, is that the anemometer just completes the circuit between these two connections momentarily as it spins. All we're trying to show here is the wiring. The green wire from the anemometer on this gray cable goes to the crock clip, comes into pin two. The red wire from the anemometer um, comes in here on the black crock clip and goes over to the ground which is the fourth pin in on the bottom here. As always, please uh, consider giving me a like, share, subscribe, and again, I do read all the comments and respond to as many as I can. So if you have any questions or comments, please do feel free. That's it for today. Zookeeper out.